right, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the digestive system of mammals. So what is the digestive system? Well, basically it's a complex process that turns the food that you eat into valuable nutrients. This is very helpful for our bodies because we use these nutrients as fuel to help repair and grow our cells. So where does digestion begin? As interesting as it is, it actually begins in the mouth. So when you smell, think about, or see food, it triggers your salivary glands. This means that you start to salivate in your mouth. And with the help of your teeth and the saliva, the enzymes in your saliva will begin to break down the food while it's still in your mouth. And then with help from the tongue, it sends the food backwards down your throat, which is known as your pharynx, and into your esophagus. So the next stop in the digestive system is through the esophagus. So the esophagus is a muscular tube that extends all the way from your pharynx to your stomach. How it gets your food through the esophagus is from a motion called peristalsis. This occurs where it's basically squeezing right before and right behind the food that allows it to be pushed down through the, the um, gastrointestinal tract. And also this occurs not only in the esophagus, it occurs throughout the entire digestive system, like in your intestines and in your stomach. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. So I'll be talking about the stomach. The stomach is a sac-like organ that mixes and breaks down food. It, ha it is located at the end of the esophagus. It has a strong, thick muscular walls. The muscles of the upper part of the stomach relaxes and accepts large volumes of swallowed material from the esophagus. And the muscles from the lower part of the stomach mixes the food with liquid and digestive juices, the stomach storage food until the small intestines is ready to receive it. This includes also the, the gallbladder, liver, and pancreas are accessory digestive organs. Next slide. Moving on to the small intestines, it consists of three segments, the duodenum, the ju duodenum and the ill ilium. The first part of the duodenum, which connects to the stomach, the middle part is the ju sorry, ju ju duodenum, and the third part is the ilium, which is what is attached to the colon. Muscular tubes that break down food using enzymes released by the pancreas and bile from the liver. Peristalsis. It also plays a major part in this organ. The duodenum is responsible to continue the process of breaking down food. The duodenum and the ileum is responsible for absorption. Next slide. For the large intestines, the ileum connects to the small and large intestines. In humans, we have a five to seven foot large long muscular tube that connects to the small intestine, intestines to the rectum. The large intestine, intestine absorbs food, absorbs water and any remaining nutrients and changes the waste from, from liquid into stool. And the rectum is located in the lower end of your intestines and the rectum stores the stool until it pushes it out during uh, which is called bowel movement. Next slide. So the cool thing about the digestive system is it's not the same in every species. So for example, mammals have different digestive systems than birds. Birds, they do not have teeth. So instead, they use an organ called the gizzard to help grind their food. They also have another organ, it's called the crop. And this organ is used if the bird is in, um, 
a situation where it needs to quickly eat the food and fly away, it will store this food in the crop before it is in a safe place to begin digestion. In this way, um, birds are considered to have a um, two, sorry, I just forgot, um, but the crop and gizzard work together to basically form one stomach rather than in mammals where we just have our one stomach that goes into our small and then large intestine. Another interesting thing about the bird digestion, digestion is that they don't have a large intestine and their small intestine is significantly shorter than that of a mammal's. This is partially because of flight and they have evolved to not have as much mass in their bodies to let them actually fly. And the last difference is instead of having a, an anus like humans and mammals do, they have what is called a cloaca. And basically the cloaca, they can use the restroom out of this and they can also use it to procreate. And it's also for storage as well. And so this is our demonstration of how the digestive system works. It's supposed to have voiceover, so if someone could like tell me if it's there or not, because if it's not there, I can just do it myself right here. But We cannot hear the sound. OK, well. mute that because it's distracting me. All right, so what um, I started off with is I got this Pyrex dish, which is going to be our mouth and scissors, which are our teeth, and then a peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter sandwich. So with the scissors, I was cutting the sandwich showing that it's like your sharp front teeth cutting the sandwich. The next you would add some water, which represents our saliva and then milk, which represents the liquid that you are eating in your meal. In the mouth, your teeth begin to break down the solid food with the enzymes that are in your saliva. After the food is in your mouth, it gets pushed backwards with the tongue through the pharynx and into the esophagus. Peristalsis then moves all of this food downward into your stomach. And this way, the, when the food reaches the stomach, it will mix with stomach acid, which is represented by our apple cider vinegar right there. And then your stomach begins to churn and twist and start further breaking down that solid food even more, and also increasing the surface area so you can get as many nutrients out of that food as possible. So after in the stomach, I cut a piece of pantyhose in half to represent what the small and large intestine are like. So the food then passes through the ileum into the, or sorry, the duodenum into the small intestine. And do the milk leaking out right here, it's just illustrating nutrients that are left that are being absorbed through the small intestine. Now, in the large intestine, this is where most of the rest of all of the water is absorbed. As you can see that it's being squeezed out. And then what's left is just a solid mass that gets pushed out into the toilet. And that is